I want to talk a bit about an organizational technique, and it's something we've seen on the other side, and it's how to design your own library. So we've already used libraries. We've seen things like the C standard library, how we can use ctype.h. Um, and we might know that one of the reasons we design functions for things is so that we can reuse them. So for example, earlier in the course, we wrote this function sum of squares. And here's its formal specification, sum of squares. It computes something, it takes a particular parameter, it returns some value, and there's the implementation. And I mentioned one of the great things about functions is that once you get one working, you can use it forever. But maybe every time I use the function, I don't want to have to keep copying and pasting it around because, for example, what happens if it changes? Uh, and then I have to change it in lots and lots of different places. And it's a bit cluttered. It's weird to have to keep everything in one long file. If I'm writing thousands and thousands of lines of code, I don't want to have to pack everything into one massive file. It would be nice to be able to reuse functions in a more modular way, um, but also just to be able to keep my code organized to split it up into multiple pieces. Maybe to group pieces of code by their purpose. So what I have here is a main function that calls um, those two functions and we can try it out. So we've got a function for summing squares. I've got a function for computing a power. We've obviously had more than enough of our fill uh, of how to compute powers with functions. So I run it, it takes the sum of squares up to 30 and it comes out as four like we, or it comes out, sorry, the sum of squares up to four comes out as 30 like we expect it to. The power three to the eight comes out to be 65, 61. And we'll notice as uh, in previous examples in my compute power function, um, I take as my, uh, oh, whoops, I guess I should change that. Um, my base should be a double. I can compute anything to a power, but I can only use powers that themselves are integers. Uh, and so it's a bit of a mock-up. It doesn't make much of a difference. I think the function might actually have another issue there. If exponent is less than zero, return zero. I guess maybe this is going to prove the point that if my function needs to be changed, if I have to fix a bug, it's sort of nice uh, that I if I have the function in only one place to fix the bug in only one place. Uh, okay, so let's just make sure that still works. Now, the actual point of the video is how can we split our code among multiple files? Uh, and then how can we do that sustainably? How could I package up my code into a library where I could include that library anytime I want from now until the end of time? So the first thing is what I could do is make two files, two .c files. I'm going to pull these functions um, out of my first file here. I'm just going to remove them. I've created this file called mylibrary.c, and I'm actually going to go and replace the implementations because I've made a, uh, a change there to fix a bug. Okay, so I've got mylibrary.c, that's a collection of functions, and over here I have a program that wants to use those functions. Okay, first thing, I am allowed if I want to, to add more than one .c file to my command line. But you might notice if I do that, uh, I have some trouble. It gives me these warnings. We know already that it's not the end of the world if I get warnings, but if I try running the code, so the functions are no longer in the same file as main. If I try running the code, I get an incorrect result, and that's no good. It's interesting to see, though, that I did get the correct result on one function, but something went horribly wrong in the other function. What's actually happening here is that if I use two .c files in my command line, the compiler does compile both of them and tries to combine them together. But it still reads only one file at a time. And so these warnings it's giving are it telling me, okay, you're calling a function called compute power. But in this file, I've never seen a function called compute power. I have no idea what that is. And so it gives a warning. I don't know how to handle this. And then it tries to handle it. But as you can see, it doesn't handle it correctly. So the next step on the road to splitting your code into multiple files is if you use functions that are in a different file, the function itself can be in the other file, but you still have to declare the function in the file that you use it. So what I want here is to add a function declaration. You might remember those from a few weeks ago. For every function that I use that isn't included in the file with main, 
I want to add a function declaration to the file that contains main. So I'll do this. And remember that a function declaration is the function signature followed by a semicolon. And that's a way of telling the compiler in advance, giving it a warning, when you use this function, it's not in this file, but it does exist. It has this name and it has this return type and these arguments. That gives the compiler enough that when you use the function in the code that it knows what to do. So we'll try that out. And we can see here it doesn't give any warnings. And when I run it, it gives the correct result. So to be clear, when I do this, I am giving both .c files in my command line. If I don't include one of them, so for example, if I don't include my library.c, the compiler will give an error. It'll say undefined reference to sum of squares. So you used a function called sum of squares, but at the end of the day, I couldn't find any implementation of that function. And so it gave an error. So I have to make sure I include both of the .c files in the command line, or else the compiler won't have all the information it needs. OK, there's that. But you might think if you write a library full of lots of different functions, it's still a bit cumbersome to have to keep copying and pasting those function signatures everywhere. And even worse, what if you happen to change one of them? If you change a function signature in your library, you have to go and find all of the code that uses the library and change the, functions, the function signature there. That isn't really a good idea because it can lead to lots of um, uh, duplicated work to redundancy, but you could end up with inconsistency as well. You could end up with a case where you forget to propagate that change through. And so what we want to do is automate that process. If I want to use mylibrary.c, I want to make sure that every file where I use those functions automatically gets a copy of all of these function signatures. In other words, I want the compiler to copy and paste the function signatures for me. And we actually have that option, and we've been using it all along. So I'm going to um, bring in my function signatures here, uh, and I'm going to create a file called mylibrary.h. And this .h file contains nothing but these function signatures. Usually in a .h file, you also include the comment that explains what a function does. That way, anybody who wants to use the library only has to look at the .h file. They, can, they have the comment. They know what it does. The compiler gets the function signature. Uh, and so the .h file contains everything that an outside observer needs to understand what the library does. So what's the point of a .h file? Well, there is this special directive. We call this thing a preprocessor directive because it actually happens right before the compiler goes to work on the file. And what you can do is use the include directive to tell the compilation process to, in this case, include mylibrary.h. So what does that mean? When you use hash include mylibrary.h, that is telling the, comp the compilation process, the compiler basically, that right before it does the compilation, to go to mylibrary.h and copy and paste everything in that file right here. And that's exactly what we want. Mylibrary.h contains function signatures, a declaration for every function in the library. So using this include directive automatically brings that in. And it's nice because it's all in one place. If I change the function signature here, it automatically gets included the next time I compile any code that uses it. Um, it's also considered to be a good practice to always use the include directive in the library code itself. Because in the library is where you're actually implementing those functions. And if you do uh, an include of the header file, that means that there's no way that there could be a difference between the signature in the header and the signature that's used when you define the function. Because if you have them both in the same place, the compiler will make sure that there's consistency. So I now have this, and we'll try compiling this again. So here, I'm in my main function using the function sum of squares and the function compute power even though I don't have a function declaration for either of them in this file because I'm using hash include to include my library header. And I'll try compiling this again. We can see uh, that it does still work. It gives the results I want. Another key thing to understand, when you compile code that uses libraries and header files, .h, you never put the .h file in the compile command line itself. You only give the files with actual C code, the .c files. The .h file is just a convenient way of storing a bunch of function declarations. 
Another thing that's very important is that as a result, we shouldn't be putting actual code in a .h file, only declarations, the kinds of things we're going to copy and paste around our program. The actual code should always live in a .c file. So here I have the function definition of the sum of squares function, and here I just have a declaration. And this declaration is the thing that gets automatically copied and pasted every time I use the hash include of my library. Uh, and the reason we need this is because starting in the labs, uh, right after the midterm and um, with assignment number four we are going to be working with making our own libraries we're going to stop writing code files that have main in them we're just going to work on writing functions that can be used by main functions defined by other people